frogs. I like them. They're both a fascinating marvel of Mother Nature's creation and the stupidest animal I've ever seen in my life. There are over 8,000 species of frogs which have adapted to survive on every corner of the globe. This is a poison dart frog. Cute, right? No. This thing is so poisonous that if you touched it, you'd die in under 10 minutes. So don't be fooled, because it has enough poison to kill you 20 times. Welcome to 5 fun, frantic, fantastic, but frivolous facts about frogs to frickin' freak out your friends. Firstly, frogs can breathe through their skin. This is a very rare trait in nature, as the only other two creatures to do it are earthworms and Prince Andrew. I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat. That, that's, that's, that's bollocks. No, it's... The average male common frog grows to around three and a half inches, which you might think is small, but I think it's the perfect size. Actually, it's quite big. It's really big. It's big, okay? It's big. When wood frogs hibernate in cold climates like Alaska, two thirds of their body become frozen solid and they don't emerge for seven months. A lot like me in a social situation. A group of frogs is called an army, just like BTS stands on Twitter, but we can't get them confused because frogs are much more intelligent. A frog's eyes are on the top of its head, meaning they can see up to 180 degrees. So if we're gonna sneak up on one, we're gonna need to be inconspicuous. I think I might have gone a bit overboard. I think I look cute. You know, I love this item of clothing, really. I think you can really wear it anywhere. It's just sort of everyday wear. You can wear it to the shops to get a pint of milk. You can wear it to a party, a restaurant, or, you know, hunting frogs or sniping enemies of the state without detection. Yeah, you can just wear it anywhere. You know, you might say you're an idiot. You've bought an autumn camouflage costume in spring and I can see you. You're, you're literally in the tree. You're right there. Um, but to that I would say, can you see me now? Yeah, I didn't think so, mate. I'm like John Cena, you can't see me. And I'm so camouflaged and agile. But it's not just the appearance of frogs that I think is perfect. It's the name, frog. Like, I think the English language really hit the nail on the head with that one. Like, Bruh. this is a frog. In German, they say frosch. In Danish, they say fru. In Japanese, they say kairu. And in French, they say déjeuner. But none of these names are quite as appropriate as frog. So this is the only public pond within about an hour's walk of my house. And even if there were frogs or toads in this pond, we wouldn't be able to see them because it looks like Shrek's swamp. And I don't know if you know how Shrek treats frogs, but we might have to go to plan B. But what is plan B, you might ask? Well, if I wasn't going to find frogs here, I was going to find them somewhere else. So, I embarked on an expedition to new lands, crossing the vast expanses of Europe like Slough, and I began my search for the amphibians of ancient Greece. I searched far and wide across the treacherous landscape of the Aegean coast, but alas, I was out of luck. And when all was said and done, I returned to my hotel, defeated. Wait. I hear it. Could this be? And there it was in all of its glory, in its natural habitat of a chlorinated swimming pool. Greece is home to exotic amphibian species, such as firebelly, toads, common tree frogs, and after extensive research to determine the species of our frog, I concluded that it was a Greek frog, which I probably could have guessed, to be honest. But nevertheless, I was ecstatic to have found a species of frog only native to a handful of European countries. Not only is the species not native to the UK, but I had also caught it in mating season. Yeah, that's right, the sound you're hearing is its mating call. And the reason it's dark in coloration is because the males turn dark brown in mating season. So after my encounter with my new friend, I thought I'd name him a traditional Greek name, and naturally, I went with Greg. Greg and I became best friends over the next few days. I could tell that Greg was very fond of me indeed. Then, one night, I came back to the pool and Greg didn't look like Greg. Greg had turned green. Which either means that this isn't Greg and it's a female, or it is Greg and mating season is over. 
So Greg is green now. But unfortunately, I would never solve the mystery of Green Greg, as it was time to go home, never to see Greg ever again. Hi, as I'm recording, this video is going out tomorrow, and we've had some developments in the frog department. You know I did that whole storyline about travelling to new lands in search of frogs? Well, there's one in my garden. And it could have been there the whole time because it's pretty well camouflaged. This is a common frog and its coloration helps it blend in with the environment. This is essential to its survival against ferocious predators like my cat. I don't know whether this is a male or female but I decided to name them very creatively Greg 2. Greg 2 and I got on like a dream but they seem kind of lonely in there by themselves so I gave them a friend which they appreciated very much. Merci d'avoir regardé ma vidéo de Renoui. Si vous avez aimé, assurez-vous de vous abonner. Au revoir. Hey man, I've kind of run out of frog ideas. Ah, look at this one's nose. Ah, uh, yeah, that was my idea. Should we just make one as flat as a pancake? <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, nice. No.